There's a, there's a lot to unpack here, but let me just tell the, the gentleman that on the issue of national emergencies, and, and by the way, I'll add war powers. Um, um, we did a hearing in the Rules Committee on that in the last Congress. I did it uh, with uh, now Chairman Cole. Um, and so, um, and I, and we thought it was appropriate to do a hearing because uh, we, we wanted to avoid any unintended consequences. So we, we, ha we have done that. But I, I, it's now becoming very clear to me um, how this is going to, how this Congress is going to operate in the Rules Committee. The gentleman just made it clear uh, about, you know, uh, that, um, you know, that, you know, everything should go through regular order except what he thinks is important. And then if he thinks it's important, then we can come here with a closed rule. Uh, and, you know, and then I, I'm a little confused over the gentleman's uh, pontificating on the fact that these are only one-page bills and therefore they shouldn't be amended. Um, you know, I, I point out that the, the bill that they had the modified open rule on was a three-page bill. Uh, but is the number of pages of a bill going to be determinative of whether or not we have amendments or not? The bottom line is people had some good ideas that they offered to the Rules Committee last night. And not only that, people had a lot of questions. And if you read the President's statement of administration policy, I mean, he raises issues about Title 42 that we seem to have a dispute on. But boy, if you did a hearing and you did a markup, you might have been able to address those things. And I'm not saying we're moving too quickly. I'm just saying we're not moving responsibly. You could, you could, you can, once your committees are constituted, you can have a hearing immediately. You can bring this to the floor next Monday or Tuesday if you want. But you chose to shut the system down, notwithstanding all of your rhetoric, notwithstanding all of the pontificating on the need for more amendments to be made in order a more open process, a more transparent process. You are beginning this session with uh, closed rule after closed rule after closed rule. Last night, the Re Rules Committee reported out four more closed rules. That's the choice you have made. So that's, we have a sense where you're going. Uh, you have a, you know, the last time you were in charge, you presided over the most closed Congress in the history of the United States government. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you beat your own record. Uh, uh, Madam Speaker, if we defeat the previous question, I will offer an amendment to the rule to ensure that none of the bills in this rule take effect unless it is certified that they do not decrease Social Security benefits. Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to insert the text of my amendment into the record along with any extraneous material immediately prior to the vote on the previous question. Without objection. Madam Speaker, Social Security is the bedrock of our nation's social safety net. Since its inception, it has lifted millions of our seniors out of poverty. Protecting the benefits it provides should be a priority for this Congress. As my Republican colleagues demand reckless cuts in exchange for paying our nation's bills, Democrats will continue taking action to protect Social Security. This is not the first time Social Security has been under attack by my friends on the other side of the aisle. Um, and don't be fooled by their phraseology that they're only interested in quite, quote, protecting Social Security, we know that that is code for cutting benefits, for raising the retirement age, for throwing people off the benefit. Um, and to discuss our proposal, I yield three minutes to the gentleman from Connecticut, Mr.